Hello and welcome to the first part of lesson four. In this lesson, we're going to revise the equations of continuity and motion for a fluid. I know that you've probably seen this material before, but if it's been a while, then hopefully these videos can be a little bit of light revision for you. We're going to start by thinking about something very fundamental, which is mass conservation. We're going to derive a statement of mass conservation in a unit cube by examining how mass flows across each face of the cube, and that mass may or may not also result in accumulation within the cube. Once we've derived an expression for mass conservation, we'll then see how the assumption that the fluid density is constant affects the answer. By doing this, we'll derive the equation of volumetric continuity and be able to write down one of the most important equations of fluid mechanics, which involves our friend, the upside down triangle. So let's think about conservation of mass. It's one of the most fundamental rules of chemical engineering, and we can easily articulate it thus. In minus out equals accumulation. OK for the chemical reaction folk, they like to say in minus out equals accumulation plus destruction. But destruction is negative accumulation. So in minus out equals accumulation. Now what we're going to do is apply this rule to a little unit cube, which we imagine is very, very, very small. And we'll see how mass flows into one side of the cube and outside the other. And then we'll generalize it to how mass flows into three faces of the cube, and then mass flows out of three faces of the cube. So let's start at the beginning. Let's think about mass flowing into the cube. On the board here, I've put a schematic diagram of the y direction face of my cube. Now, we know it's the y direction face because the normal to this face would be pointing in the y direction. This is a very, very small cube. So the lengths of each of these sides are dx and dz. And we know that if we've got a quantity dx, it's a very small quantity. Now, let's suppose I have a y direction velocity that flows through this face. So vy flows into this face. And let's now evaluate the material inflow in terms of kilos per second. We can quite simply write that my material mass inflow is equal to my fluid density rho multiplied by my y direction velocity vy multiplied by the area of the face through which it flows because we know that vy times area is simply my volumetric flow rate and if we multiply volumetric flow rate by density we get mass flow rate let's just examine those units a little more closely rho is kilos per cubic meter vy is meters per second and area is meters squared that's the product of dx and dz and so we can see that if we look at those three sets of units in a product, we just simply end up with kilos per second. So indeed, we do have a mass flow through that face. Right, so that's the mass flow into the cube. Let's think about the mass flow out of the cube. Now you can see the cube in all its glory with face lengths dz, dx and dy. And again, we're just examining the y direction face for our outflow. It's just opposite our inflow y direction face. Now, when we come to think of our material outflow, we're going to allow there to be a small change in that outflow. Let's say, for example, some materials accumulated, which is the other term in this expression. Or perhaps some of the material might have exited through a different face. And so we're simply going to say that the material flowing out of this unit cube is whatever came in less a little bit and that little bit could have been accumulated or it could have flown out through another face so the way we're going to write that is as follows we've got the material that flows in rho v y dx dy that's we've already seen that's what came in on the other face and what goes out i've written as this term here now let me just talk through this a little bit what we've said is we've allowed there to be a gradient of mass flux in the y direction. Now mass flux is just simply kilos per meter squared per second. So it's the amount of mass per second that flows through a given area. And we said let that change a bit. And if we assume there's a gradient of mass flux, which is my d by dy of rho vy, then the change is just going to be simply d by dy of rho vy times dy. And if we multiply that mass flux, kilos per meter squared per second, times an area, dx dz, we just simply end up with a mass flow in kilos a second. 
And so this statement here is basically saying, look, stuff comes in, not all of it's going out. There's a small change in what goes out, so let's write that change in this derivative form. So that's the out term. Now let's think about the accumulation term. We're dealing in kilos per second, remember, and so any accumulation has to be mass changing within this cube per unit time. So the way which we can write that easily is to say, well, we're not dealing with masses per se, we're dealing with volumetric masses, we're dealing with density. So let's say that density changes as a function of time, that's now kilos per meter cube per second, and if we multiply that term up by the volume of this cube, which is simply dx dy dz, then we end up with an accumulation term in kilos per second. Just for reassurance, here are the terms written out for you and their units. So d by dt has units of 1 over seconds. Rho, of course, is our density with kilos per cubic metre. And the product of the three differential lengths, dx dy dz, is simply a volume. And that does indeed give us kilos per second. So in minus out equals accumulation, let's now just write all those terms out that we've derived. When we do this, we can see that on the left-hand side, the white inflow term cancels with a term in the yellow outflow term, which is the term that contains what came in. So those two terms there cancel out to zero. That now leaves us one term on the left-hand side, one term on the right-hand side, both of which are multiplied up by an elemental volume, dx, dy, dz, so we can cancel those out. And taking care of the minus sign outside the bracket and the minus sign inside the bracket, what we can write is that the change in density with respect to time in the cube is simply d by dy of rho vy, the change of my mass flux in the y direction. OK, fine. Now what we've done is just a simple analysis using the y direction faces. What came in the y is what went out in the y less a little bit. We could have done exactly the same since it's a cube in the x direction, and we could have got an expression thus. And we could have done exactly the same in the z direction as well, and got an expression thus. And so we realise actually the change of accumulation, the change of mass inside the cube, is the sum of all three of these, because we could get material accumulating as a result of changes in the z direction flow, the y direction flow, and the x direction flow. So if we're going to write down our conservation of mass strictly in minus out equals accumulation, we reckon that in and out can involve all three of our cubic faces. And so, in Cartesian coordinates, my mass conservation equation can be written thus, d by dx of rho vx plus d by dy of rho vy plus d by dz of rho vz is equal to d rho by dt. Brilliant, that's mass conservation. Now, something very useful happens if we make the assumption that my density is constant. If my density is constant, we can't change the volume of that material by applying any deformation to it. So we can't compress that material. So this is the assumption of an incompressible fluid. Density is constant. So let's see what that assumption of incompressibility does to this mass conservation equation. Well, if we can't change density, we certainly aren't allowed to change density with respect to time. It doesn't change. So the derivative of density with respect to time is zero. If we look at the left-hand side, those terms in yellow, well, density doesn't need to appear inside the differential operator, does it? Because it can't change. It's just simply a constant. So we bring that density outside of the differential operators, and you basically have density pre-multiplying all those gradient terms, which on the right-hand side equals zero. So we can cancel out density as well. And what we're left with is this expression at the bottom of the blackboard. dvx by dt plus dvy by dt plus dvz by dz is going to equal to zero. See, dvx by dx plus dvy by dy plus dvz by dz is equal to zero, which, if you remember back to lesson two, is equal to del dot v in Cartesian coordinates. This is our equation of continuity. This is a really important equation in fluid mechanics, and it allows us to relate together changes in velocity in one direction to changes in velocity in another direction.
This equation is also fundamental in deriving one of the equations of motion we're going to see later on in this lesson, the Navier-Stokes equations, and we'll visit that in a few parts time. So let's just recap a few key points. We've made the assumption of a simple geometry. We've made the assumption of Cartesian coordinates and a unit cube. That was because it's easy to demonstrate the points I want to demonstrate. The same principles can be proved in any geometry. It's just the maths gets a little more involved. And if you want to look at this, have a look in Faith Morrison's book, Understanding Rheology, because she goes through the rigorous derivation of these properties there. But for a unit cube, we've derived mass conservation. And we saw that it can be basically hinged on the principles of in minus out equals accumulation. Then what we did is we made the assumption that density can't change, that the material is incompressible. And this is a very good approximation for most liquids at up to moderate pressures. If we make that assumption that density can't change, the der time derivative of density becomes zero. Density terms on the left hand side of our mass conservation cancel out, and we simply end up with a divergence of the velocity field equal to zero, which is absolutely great and very, very useful, as we'll see in the coming parts of this lesson.